All right, welcome to 3D Printing Essentials. I'm Emmett Lalish. This is Chris Iverson. Hey. And we're going to talk a little bit about the 3D printing software um, related to this whole process. Yeah, so actually, we, we are in the process of doing a 3D print on the machine next to us. Uh, that's what the noise is in the background. Uh, this was something we did in our hardware session uh, just, just before this. So uh, definitely take a look at that to see what's going on. But we're going to focus now on uh, different kinds of software you can use to build 3D models and to print uh, to a 3D printer. And I'm going to start, of course, with Autodesk. Autodesk recently announced a product called Mesh Mixer. Uh, Mesh Mixer is a free product, product now, I believe, off Autodesk's website. You can download this. It's really aimed at the consumer, uh, so making it really simple to load in models and perform some very sophisticated operations. You can sculpt models. Uh, you, can, uh, do, you can paint and add textures. Uh, and all, they've also integrated with Windows 8.1 APIs uh, to do the native printing. So you can actually print right from this app uh, uh, to one of these 3D printers. Uh, so Autodesk is really, uh, really excellent at adding model analysis. It's one of their areas of uh, expertise. Uh, they do stuff to identify uh, areas that can be uh, hollowed uh, or do analysis of the structure and provide all kinds of detail uh, to make your, your model uh, print efficiently and uh, not use too much material. So definitely take a look at their product. Yeah, yeah they have a really interesting uh, concept for support structures, actually, um, that's, that's kind of unique. Uh, but they can build this sort of truss grid work uh, just up to the specific points that, that are going to be overhanging too much and, and need that extra, extra support. Um, it makes actually a really interesting design and, and supposedly makes it pretty easy to, to snap off with pliers when you're done. Um, cool. So. The Windows 8.1 APIs don't work just for desktop applications. You can also build Windows Store apps. So the other area that you'll, you'll find applications is in the Windows 8.1 App Store. And if you go out, go out and do a search, you'll find, well, of course, there's the 3D Builder that Microsoft makes, and we'll talk about that more in a second, which is a great product. But there's also uh, other apps built by indie developers, like this one called Printer's Block Beta. They were one of the first uh, 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 developers to submit an uh, application uh, using these APIs. It's a really simple application that lets you build uh, a 3D model using blocks, kind of like Minecraft style. Uh, I've used it, it's pretty neat, and it just kind of shows you the power of having APIs in a platform where anyone can build new experiences to, to make it easy to create 3D models. And that I think is really key, because it's, it's the easiness that's, that's the real difference. You know, traditionally, people think of CAD as being such a difficult, complex thing, you have to take university classes to learn how to do it. But now we're seeing that, you know, as these things are coming into the consumer space, and there's sort of reason for kids to want to create things and, and print them, now there's this place for all these softwares to actually come out and make it easy to build stuff. And that's really exciting to see. And it's just starting. You know, we're starting to see some new paradigms in how to create objects, things like Minecraft. Um, and, and that that concept of sort of making it a, a simple, intuitive interface to, to build something 3D on your screen is, is so cool. And yeah. it's great to yeah. see new stuff coming out. We're really excited about integration with games and places where people are interacting with 3D, with 3D content already, where the, the 3D model is an output of, of stuff you're already doing uh, as part of your fun activity. Uh, that's an area that Microsoft also has a lot of strength in, so that's something that uh, I'd expect to see come to market in the next uh, 12 months or so. So next we're going on to SOLIDWORKS. Okay, yeah, let's I talk about SOLIDWORKS. So I actually just came from the Build uh, 2014 conference down in San Francisco, uh, and we had Vajrang Par Parvet who came. He's the director of engineering at SOLIDWORKS, and he came into a demo of SOLIDWORKS natively printing uh, to the Windows 8.1 pipeline. Now, this is a version of SOLIDWORKS that hasn't been released yet, uh, but it, it shows the integration in a, in a large engineering application, not just on the, on the consumer side. I mean, this is the application that a lot of people uh, use today to actually do work, I mean, to do uh, functional designs on commercial printers. So we're really excited about the commercial opportunities here. SOLIDWORKS is the first of the kind of higher-end CAD programs to implement this feature, uh, but it really demonstrates for you uh, that th these APIs work in all places and all different applications from consumer to commercial, uh, and this, uh, their integration is just fantastic. And I, you know, I use SOLIDWORKS every once in a while. I'm not a big designer like Emmett is, but uh, SOLIDWORKS to me is just sort of the definitive engineering product. 
uh, to make functional parts. It's, a, it's just a fantastic product. I well, really look forward to that integration. I mean, especially because it, this is what engineers learn on so commonly. Yeah. You know, I know when I was in engineering school, we took SolidWorks classes. This is very common in the educational space. I'm sure that this is going to be really useful in universities because I already know there's a lot of universities that are getting 3D printers. Everyone's learning SolidWorks, being able to put that stuff together um, and then get engineers trained that know that whole process and then can go off to work in a company and know immediately how to prototype their parts. Yeah. So CAD and CAM applications, you know, that's pretty scary for most people. So uh, t uh, products like Autodesk's uh, um, mesh mixer application. And then of course, we also have this application called 3D Builder. This is an app, app that we've talked about. Uh, Microsoft released this with our original integration in Windows 8.1. And this serves as, a, as the getting started app for 3D printing. It comes with a basic catalog of models that you can uh, start with and customize. And we have a major update to 3D Builder uh, going out uh, right now, as a matter of fact that provides the ability for you to customize and personalize uh, objects uh, with embossing. It actually has features to uh, allow you to import scan data that you can get from some of the sensors on the market today. It makes it really easy just to take content from the real world, prepare it for a 3D print, uh, 3D print and, and get it ready. And we're really proud of this app because one of the things we're really trying to show off here is that you know, CAD doesn't have to be a big desktop app with a mouse and a keyboard and a thousand buttons and menus. It can be a simple, touch-first, intuitive kind of concept that you can use with either a mouse or a touch screen and get all the basics done. Uh, we really wanted to kind of show that, hey, you know, this is possible. This is not the end of the world and it's time to really start thinking about this. You know, I am sure that ours will not be the be all and end all of, of these apps, right? But we're trying to trying to get people the idea that, hey, this, this is doable, this is sort of some ideas we have, and maybe you can take this and run with it and come up with your own awesome CAD apps that any kid yeah. can pick up and use. Yeah, that's super great. So we have a, a colleague, Steve Olson, who's in the process right now of building a, a demo for Maker Fair uh, San Mateo, which is, uh, if, in case you're watching this in the future, uh, that's May 17th and 18th, uh, 2014. We'll actually be there with Steve, and he's doing a set of trophy bases, and he's going to show how you can create a customized trophy. In fact, I'm working to try to get a scan of someone's face. So not only can you customize the trophy, you can put up your own face on it or a face of someone you know onto that thing. And it just shows you how powerful some of the software is getting now, where without having CAD and CAM experience, you can build some very customized objects and do some things you know, that are just really cool. <laughs> So we, there's some other apps uh, that, that we'll talk about. I don't have slides for them here in our, in our slide deck, but there's an application called NetFab Professional. NetFab is well known for model repair and model analysis and 3D printing. Uh, they've integrated with our, our file format, 3MF. Uh, that application is available on their website, netfab.com now. That's another app that's super great. I mean, we use that all the time in, in, inside the house. Yeah, I use that a lot. It's 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 fantastic for being able to to make detailed changes and fixes to models. Um, it's really common to get 3D content coming in from something like a scan or, or especially from uh, existing 3D stuff like uh, renderings, say from games or all kinds of other uh, computer graphics kind of concepts. And they're really interesting parts that we'd love to be able to print, but a lot of times they're you know, they're only meant to be viewed, so they aren't necessarily fully solid. Um, and it's the computer can't necessarily figure out exactly what's going on, or they'll have very thin details that are just not going to really be physically possible to manufacture. Um, and a tool like NetFab is great to go in and kind of fix stuff, close holes, thicken objects, all that sort of detail. Yeah, we'll talk stuff. about model repair a little bit later, actually. That's a very key feature of of 3D modeling. Uh, a lot of the software packages are providing support for this now, but this is a key investment for Microsoft as well, uh, where 3D Builder has some uh, automatic model repair built in. You can go find models out on the internet that maybe came from computer graphics or games. They're typically not made to be printed, but with our model repair service, uh, you'll be able to import these things into 3D Builder uh, and automatically get them ready as true printed vo uh, printable volumes, get them ready to, to print to a 3D printer very reliably. Exactly. And there's lots of other software tools available out there. Um, one that I happen to be a fan of, maybe because of my engineering background, is one, uh, an, an open source tool called OpenSCAD. Um, and it's actually the, it builds itself as the programmer's CAD language. So that's uh, very unusual compared to most CAD apps. I mean, it's not 
graphical, right? So I'm not saying it's for everybody, um, but I, I really enjoy it. And, and it allows you to do especially sort of mechanical designs. Like I've, I've created a, a model of a sleeve valve engine here. Um, where you can take all these pieces and, and assemble them together into a, a wow, basically that's, a working prototype. That's so cool, yeah. Um, and you know, designing all of these gears to be the proper shape and to to mesh with each other and everything to be properly parametric, so that if I needed to change the diameter of the piston or something, I, everything can adjust on its own. It's a really great system for that. Um, but again, it, it all depends. You know, the, the beauty of the, the app diversity is that everyone thinks a little differently. Everyone's going to find a different concept intuitive. It's really important to have a variety of apps so that you know, whoever's out there can find something that makes sense to them, something that they have an easy time interacting with. Because there's never yeah. going to be a one-size-fits-all solution. This is a, I mean, this is a key part of Microsoft's strategy is to make these APIs available for Windows App Store developers. And we're not going to talk today too much about how to develop applications for Windows. We'll save that for a session in the future. Uh, but we do have an SDK out there available that makes it super easy. Like in one line of code, uh, you can integrate with an, uh, a WebGL-based uh, uh, Windows Store application, and you can actually add 3D printing functionality to it. So we actually are seeing now the beginning of a whole revolution in apps, and in, a lot of independent developers are, are publishing things. Uh, I expect here you know, in a few months there's going to be you know, hundreds of applications for this. Yeah, I have no doubt. Um, this is, it's, it's a really expand, rapidly expanding kind of concept right now. There's so much happening. Um, yeah. It's great to look online and see all the projects that people are doing, the, the new materials that are coming out, yeah. the new applications. Yeah, it's that rapid iteration in the hardware and combined with the, these improvements in software that are really kind of bringing about this next generation in 3D printing. And actually, this print is very nearly done. Um, probably in just maybe, uh, I'd guess a minute or so, it'll actually finish so up. So for those that didn't watch the previous section, like how long has this thing been printing? I would say maybe half an hour. Um, it's not a very big part, and as I said before, um, the amount of time it takes is really just a matter of the, the volume of plastic. And it's not even the volume of the part itself, because the standard thing we do with 3D printing is we actually print almost all parts hollow. Uh, one of the beauties of 3D printing is that it's easy to make things hollow, and it's one of the simplest ways that you can save both time and material in creating your part. You just put sort of enough of a, a webbing of infill inside it that it can sort of give the part some strength and support, um, but it's, it's mostly just air inside there, and that's all taken care of automatically by the software. You just sort of can specify, oh, I want so much infill density, you know, maybe um, sort of a, a low density, and then it'll automatically figure out a fill pattern. Um, and so the beauty of that is really the, the time and the expense of the part is its weight. Um, and you'll find that these things come out incredibly light because they're hollow they're mostly and made hollow. of plastic. So remind us again what this object is that we start printing. That's right. So this is a little Windows logo keychain. And what we can see here is um, it's already this, finished. This came from the 3D Builder app uh, uh, like object catalog, right? Yep. And so, you know, the print is done. The, uh, the printer has saved itself, it's busy cooling down. Um, it'll take a few minutes, so you don't want to touch this um, until it's cool. You might burn yourself. So what are you doing here? Bit. You're using your putty knife to scrape it off the That's off right. The I'm just using tape. the putty knife to kind of get it under, under the tape. And you want to be a little careful or you'll, or you'll scratch up the tape. If you're, if you're careful, you can actually get the tape to last um, for, for a number of builds um, before you have to kind of uh, scrape it all off and make another one. But you can see, basically, this part has come out. Hold it up for the camera if you can. Yeah, I'll get back to my spot here. And what you can see um, is this thing, it, it, it already freely moves. Um, it's got these, oh, these cool. four little... Like a close-up on that? Sort of, a, sort of four little live tiles. Hold it up to the camera over here if you can. Yeah. So, that's about... So well, those little window panes in there are actually moving, and, and that came assembled in that way, right? And, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it shouldn't say assembled. It was printed as one unit in this way. You didn't do any assembly. You just that's took right. it right off the print bed. It's, it's what I would call a pre-assembled mechanism. That's, um, that's so cool. I love that, that. Basically, yeah, all these things can move already, and, and they're, they're integral. They're locked in there. You can't get them out yeah, and you know, without again, breaking this, it. This is a demonstration of how, uh, the, you know, this is a demonstration of something you can't do using a CNC machine or... Uh, using any other you know fabrication process that's that's relatively inexpensive. That's right. 
So I think that about wraps it up. All right, Dad, so it. that's it for software and, you know, well, for, for other software that's available, but we're going to go in depth on 3D Builder in the next section, uh, do a, a full demo for you of the, some of the new features we have in this application uh, and talk more about the investment Microsoft, Microsoft has in this particular app.